this lesson is going to focus on the distributive property. There are properties in mathematics um, that we need to know. The distributive is very important. Other ones are the commutative property and the associative property. I'll just run through those as quick as I can because they're common sense and it's not really something we need to worry about, you know, the, the, the uh, vocabulary of this. But basically, commutative property means if you have 3 times 4, that's 12, isn't it? And what's 4 times 3? Well, 4 threes is also 12. So 3 times 4 is the same as 4 times 3. So if we're multiplying, the two numbers can be swapped around, and that's the commutative property of multiplication. doesn't matter if the numbers are positive or negative. Negative 2 times positive 5, negative 10. Positive 5 times negative 2 is also negative 10. So we can swap the numbers around with multiplication. And that's the commutative property. Also works for addition. 3 and 4 is 7, isn't it? That's the same as 4 plus 3, right? Negative 2 plus 5 is positive 3. That's the same as 5 plus negative 2. Also positive 3. So commutative means we can switch the numbers around with addition or multiplication. The associative property. If you have 3 plus 4 plus 1, well, if you add these first, 3 and 4 make 7, 7 plus 1, 8, right? How about these? If you add these ones first and now have 3 plus 5, so adding the last two first, that also makes 8. No big deal. Okay, but subtraction, we have a problem because if we do this, go 3 minus 4 first, 3 minus 4 is negative 1, and then subtract 1. Negative 1 minus 1 is negative 2. But if we did this first, 4 minus 1 is 3, but 3 minus 3 is 0. So subtraction is not associative. Basically, we must go from left to right with subtraction. So that's all we need to watch out for. And, you know, these things are common sense, and we'll look out for them as we go. What you may not be familiar with is the distributive property. And here's how it goes. If you have 10 times 7, write down the answer. Definitely 70. That is the same as this, 10 times 2 plus 5. Now, 2 plus 5 is 7, isn't it? And if we multiply that, the one way we could do it is multiply 10 times 2 to get 20, then multiply 10 times 5 to get 50, and 20 and 50 makes 70. So this is the distributive property, distributing the 10 to multiply by the 2 and by the 5. So, for example, what's 2 times... Um, 2 times 13, write down the answer. It's definitely 26, isn't it? Well, the distributive property would look like this. 13 is the same as 7 plus 6. So we could go 2 times 7, 14. 2 times 6, 12. 14 plus 12, 26, right? Okay. And here's something that we do a lot. If you were to buy this pen, this, this marker here in the store, it might cost you 99 cents, right? Well, if you were to buy three of these markers, one, two, three, buy three markers in the store, what's the price? People have a, a shortcut way of figuring this out in their head. So see if you can think about what that might be. Three times 99 cents. Because it's it's a little bit of work to go the, do the long division on that, isn't it? Or the long multiplication on that, rather. That's a little bit of work. Most people say, okay, that's almost three dollars, and then subtract three cent, uh, subtract one cent for each pen. So it's three dollars minus three two ninety seven. What they actually do is the distributive property, because ninety nine cent is one dollar minus one cent zero point zero one. If I multiply 3 times that, 3 times 1 is 3, 3 times 1 cent, or 3 times negative 0 0.01 is negative 0 0.03. Now, 
three dollars minus three cents is two ninety seven. Okay, if um, if um, a, a special pen cost five ninety nine in the store, if you were to buy seven of those, what would the cost be? Well, it's a little uh, seven times. This is almost six. Seven times six is forty-two. Using the distributive property, let's write this down. Five ninety-nine is six dollars minus one cent, isn't it? So if I multiply that quantity by seven, seven times six forty-two. Seven times zero point zero one, or negative zero point zero one, is negative zero point zero seven. So we have $42 minus 7 cent, which makes 41 and 93, isn't it? Another use of the distributive property would be in multiplying fractions. So if you were doing this, 4 times 1 and 3 quarters. First thing we have to remember is that 1 and 3 quarters is 1 plus 3 quarters. So this is 4 times 1 plus 3 quarters. Right? Now I can apply the distributive, distributive property. 4 times 1 is 4. 4 times 3 quarters. So I have 4 times 1 plus uh, 4, and we'll put that red, 4 times uh, 3 quarters, right? How did I start with 1 4 and then have 2 4s? Well, I used the distributive property. That's what the distributive property does. It multiplies a 4 times this number and then a 4 times this number as well. So that this four, that's 4 plus, and then we can write this 4 as 4 over 1. And multiply these fractions, and these 4s cross cancel. I have 1 times 3 over 1 times 1. That's 3 over 1. That's 3. So 4 and 3 is 7. So go ahead and do this one. 3 times 7 and 2 thirds. Again, the 7 and 2 thirds can be written 7 plus 2 thirds. Multiply that by 3. We need to apply the distrib distributive property. 3 times 7 is what we do first. Plus 3 times the 2 thirds, right? So multiply it by 7, then multiply the 3 by the 2 thirds. And we usually write these um, uh, loops here so we rem remind ourselves what to do. 3 times 7 is 21. And this 3 can be written 3 over 1. These 3's can be cross cancelled. 1 times 2 is 2 over 1, that's 2. 21 plus 2, 23, right?